Texans offensive line takes yet another hit. Titus Howard going to miss not only Sunday, he's going to miss the first four weeks of the season. What in the heck is going on with Titus Howard and where do the Texans go from here? And how the heck did we even get here? Let's go inside the locker room. Yeah. Yeah. It's the locker room on YouTube. You know what it is. Let's get it. Hey. Locker room, yeah, we in the locker room. Texas talk, yeah, you know what we about Welcome to, to the locker room, number one source for Texans digital content. I'm Landry Locker. You can hear me Monday through Friday, 10 to 2 on Sports Radio 610. And the Odyssey app got some big breaking news uh, for the Texans. Titus Howard placed on IR. He's going to miss the first four games of the season. We'll get into the strangeness of this injury and how the hell we got here. Something's going on. Something happened. Uh, I'll give you the timeline and we'll try to get to the bottom of that. Although good luck uh, with that. But what this means in the short term, we'll get into that. Be sure to subscribe, like, ride along. Uh, it is the number one source for Texans daily digital content uh, at Landry Locker on Twitter. Uh, we talked to players throughout the week. Actually going to have someone on the show tomorrow, likely in the 11 o'clock hour. Uh, so tune in there i think you'll be pleased with who that is uh going to be uh be sure to subscribe like right along though what does this mean in the short term this means the texans are going to have to play musical chairs even more so on the offensive line you already got issue uh with Kenyon green out for the season you're starting left guard uh you're starting center juice scruggs he's out at least four weeks and now you're starting right tackle titus howard he's going to miss four weeks uh, and this is the biggest injury of all you didn't know what you had in Kenyon green and, and juice scruggs and quite frankly Kenyon green might not have even been the best option uh at left guard with the way things were going regardless of the reason why but titus howard you just paid him you made him one of the higher paid right tackles in the league he's missing time uh, this one hurts very very badly uh, for the Texans. And you, you got to wonder, do they put George Fant at right tackle? Is Jones, uh, who Josh Jones, who right now is listed as your starting left guard, does he go to right tackle? And we'll get into that depth chart because what, what's listed might not really matter um, in the big scheme of things. So this is a big one. I uh, got to think they just move Fant over and try to figure something out. But this is really going to be come down to a couple of things. Uh, first of all, uh, do they have quality depth uh, and are the guys that they, do the guys that they have uh, behind these guys, do they have the ability uh, to at least function at a, at, at a decent to moderate level? Can't expect too much from your backup offensive lineman uh, when they take the field. Furthermore, does Bobby Slowick, the offensive coordinator, does he have the ability to scheme um, to where these offensive linemen um, maybe aren't asked to do as much as, as, you would ask Titus Howard uh, or Juice Scruggs uh, to do. Uh, so that's the question. We'll, we'll have to see how that goes. Also, the running backs are a little bit better uh, this year from top to bottom. So maybe the running backs uh, can help out. I do think running backs, good running backs, can make offensive lines better. Um, and we'll see how that goes. But I want to get into this timeline. And I, and I don't have like some sort of theory on what the hell happened, but – the timeline is kind of weird with the Texans. I'm not going to sit here and say they mishandled. I'm not going to sit here and say that they're shady. I'm not going to sit here and say that they, you know, hid something from the people. I don't know what went on, but the timeline was weird. It, it seemed like Titus Howard was on track to returning. And he was practicing as, as recent as Monday. He was working out very shortly after he got the cast. Uh, he was listed uh, first string on the depth chart, which came out yesterday. So something happened here along the way. Something had to have happened, or it could just be some bad reporting uh, that we took as the gospel. I don't know, but it is something. And if you don't believe me, let's just go through this timeline. So on August 5th, that's four weeks from Saturday, four weeks from this past Saturday, Titus Howard injured his hand. Uh August 7th, it was reported that Titus Howard had surgery on his hand. That's four weeks from Monday. Uh, Adam Schefter reported that Titus Howard was going to miss four to six weeks. So as soon as you saw that, you thought at the latest he was going to be back 
for Indianapolis. Uh, you thought maybe at the earliest he would be back for Baltimore. The time frame seemed to line up. And Adam Schefter has to be getting this from somewhere, right? So you immediately thought, okay, maybe he misses a game. Maybe he misses two games. But the four to six weeks, again, four weeks from Saturday, August 5th, uh, four weeks from Monday, August 7th, was when he had the surgery. Adam Schefter reports he's going to miss four to six weeks. Now, I don't like holding these athletes to like expectations of when they do come back, but typically it's coming from someone who knows what the hell they're doing. Like these timelines aren't just set up to like pressure them to come back too soon. When you hear four to six weeks, you think, all right, he might be back against Indianapolis uh, week two. He might be on the field against Jacksonville week three. Oh, uh, the ultimate optimistic approach um, or outlook, he's going to be out there week one against uh, the the Baltimore Ravens. And then you see him practicing, you see the cast on the hand, and you think that Titus Howard might be out there. Now, some people would say, well, maybe he aggravated it in practice uh, on Monday. That's possible. Uh, they had a couple of off days before that. Maybe he aggravated in practice on Monday, and he practices on Monday, which was four weeks after it was reported that he got the surgery. Okay, let's pretend he did aggravate it. The depth chart comes out on Tuesday. He's listed as first string on the depth chart. So yesterday he's listed as first string on the depth chart, and then today he's placed on IR. So something just seems kind of weird there. He seemed to be trending in the right direction. Titus Howard seems to have a lot of, uh, I don't want to say buddies, but he has people in the media um, that seem to uh, be connected to him or whatever, none of them seem to see this coming. Uh, what happened? Did it get aggravated? Was the timeline jacked up? Uh, did he try to rush back too soon? Now, all of a sudden, you go from a four- to six-week injury to now it's going to be eight to ten weeks, depending on when he comes back. Just a little bit strange, but regardless, in the big scheme of things, it really doesn't matter. Uh, it's just a really big injury for the Texans and the biggest injury that they've suffered uh, early in this season, and they've suffered a lot of injuries on the offensive line. Uh, lost Questenberry um, early on in camp. Uh, their starting center last year lost Juice Scruggs, expected to replace him, and then um, Kenyon Green, uh, and now Titus Howard, biggest injury of all. Be sure to subscribe, like, right along for the latest on the Texans. This injury, uh, it's big, and not only is it big, it's I guess a little bit weird. Uh, no matter what happens, though, when it comes to this text and stuff, we are all in this together. Be sure to like the video, uh, follow along, join the 9 p.m. streams. Uh, the season is coming, whether the offensive line is on the field or not. It's coming, and we're all in it together. Angles, what we really do. We the source, we the posts of the city, Let's too. Landlock, got the game in the headlock. Localize every time, can't stop, won't.